welcome back to my channel it's Yale Miss Yale and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I learned how to formulate natural hair products so if you're not already subscribed to my channel go ahead hit the subscribe button turn on my post notifications so you are aware of when I post and let's get straight into it okay so I know that there's a lot of people out there that want to start a natural hair business but they do not know how to formulate um, so for me, I learned how to formulate online right here on YouTube. There is a lot of helpful videos out there and then there's a lot of not so helpful videos out there. So for me, my products are the kind of products that need preservatives and to be able to retain life shelf. So what I did is I looked up videos of people that were making products and they used preservatives. I did my best to ignore any videos where people were just making products without preserving them because then that is pointless for me because I'm trying to run my business at like the highest level, the most professional, and I would want my products to last a long time, you know, at least a year lifespan, which is the typical lifespan of natural hair products. So um, for me, my first product was my hair growth oil. For hair growth oils, you typically do not need a preservative because it is usually just a combination of carrier oils and essential oils. So I learned how to formulate a hair growth oil because with essential oils, you do not want to use them just on their own because they are way too potent. So when you're researching how to make a hair growth oil, you're going to learn that it needs to be diluted with a carrier oil. So for my um, products, some of my carrier oils are castor oil, sweet almond oil, apricot kernel oil. I use those and also jojoba oil. I use those as my carrier oils so that my essential oils such as peppermint oil, lavender oil won't overpower and be a mess on somebody's scalp. So that's how I learned to formulate my hair growth oil. Then I moved on to my hair growth butter. Um, for that, you usually don't need a preservative as well. You only need usually to use is vitamin E. Vitamin E is not a preservative. It just helps for your product to not oxidize. Um, so that's usually why people use vitamin E in hair butters because hair butters usually only consist of butter and oils. So you can use regular butters such as shea butter, um, mango butter, cocoon butter, like any type of butter you want to use, you're usually mixing that in with some type of carrier oil and then also some people add in essential oils or you can even add in like herbal extracts such as herbal powders. So those things that are added in do not need a preservative. The only time you're going to notice that you're going to need to preserve your products is when water is involved because once water is involved, any bacteria can come into your product when you're in and out the shower, you're adding water, moisture in the air, and that's when bacteria and stuff can grow. And that's when you're going to find that you need a preservative. So products such as shampoo, deep conditioner, leave-in conditioner, a styling product, um, those things are going to need a, a preservative because it's going through a whole different formulation process. So for my next product i'll just go with the deep conditioner um my deep conditioners those products are going through different phases so there is a water phase there is an oil phase and there is a cool down phase um and during the cool down phase is when you are going to add a preservative so how did i learn how to formulate the products that um consist of you needing to emulsify i went on youtube so these are the more harder products to make because they are broken down into phases, like I said. And these phases you will learn and you can learn them through people such as Yaya on YouTube. If you type her in, um, her channel pops up. She's like a do-it-yourself natural hair product girl and she shares so, so much information about like measurements um the phases and shows like how she really uses them um she shares her ingredients that she uses um like i said measurement sizes and from there that's how i started to learn how to formulate formulate like i would watch like her videos on formulating a deep conditioner um a styling cream and it really helped me to learn and understand the process of making my own products because 
um, typically when she would make products she would use like an 8 ounce size jar to create these products and that's also the jar size that I use for my products so I could kind of go based off of her measurements of things I do not use her same exact ingredients formulas and stuff like that because you're not supposed to do that <laughs> um, but you can learn the process of making the products so what you would do is learn like water phase like I learned what I can put in water phase such as you know regular water or sometimes I can use aloe vera juice in my water phase or like a herbal tea bath you will learn all of those things through like watching her videos so that was the very first person I started learning and learning how to formulate from the next person I learned from is Whole Elise. She is also on YouTube and her videos are super, super informative, very crystal clear, high quality. Um, I really love her channel because she focuses more so on getting your products to like very high quality as the same products that are sold in stores. Like I don't know how she learned how to formulate, but she does a really good job at teaching you how to get it very close to like professional quality like after I found her my formulations just went up even more because she just breaks down everything so well so it is like the same type of process of a water phase an oil phase and a cool down phase and I learned a lot about preservatives and there are different types of preservatives it just really depends on you figuring out what you want for your products because like I said different brands use different preservatives but you'll play around and kind of learn like okay which preservative do I like better for my products and then you can also take their recommendations and figure out what preservative you would like to use in your products so for me personally I do use liquid dermal plus but I am thinking about switching it out in the future just gotta play around with some things and see what I like also in the beginning I used BTMS 50 and then I started using BTMS 25 and then I also started using steady alcohol once I learned more about ingredients and things like that that's a part of course a part of the journey and learning things a lot of formulating and making natural hair products reminds me of cooking like a lot of the times like you might make your spaghetti one type of way one day and then the next time you turn around you're like maybe if I add in just a little bit more of this kind of sauce or do less of these noodles it will taste better and it's kind of like the same thing with making natural hair products if you add a little bit more of oil to your product or a little bit more of shea butter to your product or a little bit more of steady alcohol to your product it's going to turn out different each way and each time you play around with your formulations you might find something that you like better than the last product so a lot of me formulating had to be a lot of trial and error I reformulated my mango butter three times three times until I was like okay I like this one and that's another thing that kind of references back to me telling you guys um, everything is not going to be perfect in the beginning of creating your business like I formulated a some of my products a few times until I get it to perfectly how I want it and how I imagine it um, and of course a lot of people did like like did like like my first formulation of a product like they like the first mango butter but to me I was just like this could be better so I did go back in and reformulate and get it down packed so like for the mango butter I believe what I did is I did add coconut oil so it can get more of a smoother texture and consistency I upped the amount of oil that was in the product so then that also changes the product as well so you're going to find yourself playing around with your formulations to get what you like. But um, when it comes to the products, like I said, where it consists of deep conditioner, leave-in conditioner, a styling cream, you're going to be um, dealing with three phases, which is water phase. Like I said, that's the very first phase. So you could probably do like a basic formulation of like seven ounces of water. And what you would do is you're going to put that in a... Uh, what's it called a water bath and you're going to get that hot into a certain temperature while that's starting to heat up you're going to be working on your oil phase oil phase is going to consist of whatever carrier oils that you want to place into this natural hair product so it could be castor oil jojoba oil olive oil um, avocado oil you're going to figure that out and you're going to figure out the measurements of it because 
um, you could of course look at Holy Lease or Yaya's video and you could use the same exact measurements of the oils they're using and just swap it out for whatever oil that you're going to use. So say they used 3 grams of avocado oil in their video to make their product but you don't want to use avocado oil, you want to use castor oil, you would still use the same gram amount that they use. So you would use 3 grams of castor oil instead of 3 grams of avocado oil. That's basically how I learned to formulate. Like, I would look at the basic recipe and just switch it out for whatever ingredients that it is that I want to use. And then if when I got my final product, it still wasn't quite how I wanted it, I would either up the amount of oil or do less of the oil. You're going to play around with it. Same thing with the butters that you add in. Because during oil phase, you're going to add in your butter. So usually I might have a recipe where it's shea slash mango butter or just mango butter. And I learned to play around with that and add in as much of the product that I want to have that buttery feel. And then also during oil phase is when you're going to add in your BTMS. This is what emulsifies the product. So this is what helps bring water and oil together because we all know water and oil on its own do not mix. So you need that BTMS to be able to make it mix. Now BTMS 50 makes your product even more thicker but it is more expensive so this is why a lot of people switch to BTMS 25 because it still emulsifies your product and gives it a little bit of thickness but it is way less um it is way um less money to spend on BTMS 25 so that's why I ended up switching to BTMS 25 now also what you're going to want to do is steady alcohol. You guys hear about that ingredient a lot. It is very important because this is what helps with the velocity of your product. This is what helps make it thicker, what makes it creamier. You're going to play around with this um, amount that you want to put in as well. You can of course watch Hola Lee's and you can see like, oh she might use 2 grams of steady alcohol but when your product comes out, it might not be as thick as you want. So you would add more steady alcohol in to make it thicker or you would add less if you want a thinner consistency. So this is what I mean by you will start playing around with your formulations and figuring out what you like. So yeah, that's pretty much oil phase. You would add your butters, your oils, your BTMS, and your steady alcohol. Now after that, you're going to emulsify and blend everything in between your water and oil. And then you cover your product, you're going to place it in the freezer, and this is what moves you into cool down phase. Now depending on the preservative that you use, you need to look at what temperature you're supposed to use that preservative at. And whatever that temperature is, is when you need to take your product out of the freezer, add in your preservative, and you're going to start mixing and blending until you get that perfect consistency of what you want. So this is when you have to figure out how long does my product need to stay in the freezer going in and out of the freezer until it gets that consistency that you like. A lot of people think this is an easy process um, but it can be very tricky. Okay so you can either leave your product in too long and it'll end up being a texture that you don't really like. It can become too hard too thick or you can leave it in the perfect amount of time and get a nice smoothie creamy consistency and then pretty much after you get what you like you would add in your essential oils or even your fragrance and you're done with your product and all you have to do is fill your jars and that's pretty much like the same type of process if you're doing a deep conditioner a leave-in conditioner or a styling cream you'll be playing around with a bunch of different measurements to figure out what it is exactly like that you like but if you just need a basic like recipe, a basic breakdown of what you're supposed to be doing for each type of products, I highly suggest either looking into Yaya's channel or Holy Lease, and I will of course have both of them linked in the description box below. That pretty much um, summarizes how I got started with formulating. It was just simply me googling or researching on YouTube exactly what I'm trying to make. So how to make hair butter, how to make deep conditioner. And I always, for the products, like I said, that contains water that needs a preservative, I always try to watch people that actually use preservatives and explain how to use them. Um, because watching videos where they don't explain preservatives or use preservatives is a waste of time because eventually your product will go bad and it doesn't have a long shelf life. So try to look up people that know how to use preservatives. And also, my favorite thing to tell you guys all the time is research, research, research look it up you can um 
read it out if you're not more so one of those people that need to visually see things then you can of course read how to formulate certain products but sometimes the process is more drawn out and longer of understanding it when you read like the articles and stuff if you just want like straight to the point watching somebody actually make the products and measure things out and do a final result then i highly suggest youtube if you're one of those visual learners so i hope this video was super helpful for you guys who are trying to figure out how to formulate and where to start and where to look don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel make sure you check out my business lavish curls beauty i will have it linked in the description box below and i will see you guys on my next one bye guys